Hello, and uh, welcome to this very quick demonstration video. Um, I apologize in advance for the sound. Um, no, no matter when or how I make a video, the sound is always pretty bad. And uh, nothing I do seems to make up for it, so I'm just going to plow on ahead and hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. What you can see here is the Inkscape website. It's the current live website. And what I'm going to demonstrate is how this central piece with the tabs has been um, replaced and updated. And um, I'm going to show you quickly how to use it um, so that you can change the Inkscape website to look more interesting and to keep it up to date with whatever cha changes happen in the future. First of all, let's look at one of the problems with the live website. We use Django CMS, and in Django CMS you can turn this little, little, little switch and turn the website into a, an editable version. And straight away you can see that the front page has been basically destroyed by the um, CMS integration. If we turn it to the structure view, you can see what's happening here. Our three columns at the bottom with the news and the text, they're relatively fine, but these banners are kind of all over the place. If we go in and edit one of them, you can see we have a basic piece of HTML, but inside of the source, you'll see that there are um, lots of customized classes and very important to remember things about how this is constructed so that when it's saved it looks right. Um, the other thing is that the um, images that you see here can't be modified. Um, they are fixed within the CSS and the same thing goes for, for these images. In fact the, the, the text in the tabs and the images there can't be changed not even for translation. Um, which is a bit of a problem. So what I, what I had to do was rip this entire thing out and reconstruct it. Reconstruct its CSS, reconstruct its JavaScript, reconstruct its HTML so that it looks the same but it, it's actually different. Um, so this you can see is a uh, not live version of the website that's running locally and I'm going to show you uh, the process of adding in this new widget that I've built. Turn it to draft and first of all you can see that there's three columns the same as there was before but now you've got this front body uh, section which is just one big piece and then this big piece you can add this front shield widget which is what I've decided to call that um, widget. Now, you can see straight away that it's not giving us a HTML box to edit. Um, I've decided not to um, make it a HTML editing box, but instead to be a far more rigid set of instructions about what to display in this area. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set an order. So I want the first one the overview. You can see I've typed these things in before to test. And I'm going to add a couple of items. There we go. And then here's where it gets interesting. I can actually select the, the, the background image that I want to use, as well as the author. Now the author is important because that's uh, uh, important for attribution, which many of these images will have. Uh, so we should make sure to add users into the system that correspond to the authors of the documents. Even if they don't have a logon user, they should still have a user. Uh, as, as well as setting the license, even though it's not bold enough or not required, I'd still recommend setting the license for each one of them. Uh, let's just quickly fill in some data so you can get to see what this looks like. Save that. Uh, you can see here we've got this front shield widget installed. Now you can see here in the content view that this overview tab is taking up the entire room and it looks 
much the same way as the pre pre previous one did. These here they are side by side for comparison. You can see there's there's a little diff difference in the way that it's laid out, um, but that's just CSS anomalies in the way that th things are constructed. Uh, but now I can double click on it, and if you scroll down, you can see there's another one. So I'm going to add another one. Uh, features this time. Add an icon, pressing the little green button. Uh, what's the features icon? Clipboard. Okay. Just add these images back in. See, the images used to be a part of the static con content for the website, um, but they've been removed. So now they're a part of the uh, dynamic content for the website. Uh, banner title, that's who it's by. This is vector artwork. And the banner file is that strange telescope thing. And the author and the license. text in, into this one and now you can see we have uh, two tabs and it fades the same way as it did before and uh, we, you don't actually have to save it and click on it you can actually scroll down to the bottom and just add another tab with this little link here um, and you can create as many tabs as you want but of course the CSS is basically spec'd for four but it can accept five or six it's just that the uh, the size of the words starts to become an issue. Now if you've got a language that you're tra translating into, like for instance Spanish, uh, where the words are big, um, then you might decide to only have three tabs on the Spanish front page and that's fine. Uh, if you've got a, a, a language like Chinese or Japanese where the words are actually going to be pretty small, then you could have six, seven or eight tabs um, and they'd all work uh, exactly as you'd expect. Um, so as you can see here, uh, the, this order num number is actually just in which order they appear um, in that list. And it, it'll reorder them if you change change that number. There's a heart for this one. Uh, when we deploy this to live, there's going to be a bit of a... Um, content migration uh, step to, to, to put the, the, all the information back into the English um, pages um, and then the other lang lang languages will actually have this missing from their front page um, and so tra translators really really must um, copy the widget start to see the con content is building up. You can also see that the, the, the various bits and pieces like the buttons and the uh, text is all optional. Um, if you don't specify it, it doesn't appear. Um, so if you press publish, it should um, save the page. And there you go, there, it's live. Uh, now this allows us to have far more control over this front, front page now than we ever did before. And because it's a widget, we get some extra interesting functionality for free. And that's the fact that this widget can actually be put onto any page. Um, so I'm just going to show you by changing the, the download page. The first thing I need to do is to make sure that the template is on full screen. This is to get rid of the, uh, the breadcrumbs and the borders for the page. Um, the widget likes to be 
uh, flush against the top of it. So we're going to, I can see if I did one of these before. I'm going to delete that one though because it's, it was scrapped. So I, I go up to the corner here and I go new front shield. serious with the con content here. A person who is deploying this wi widget on a page would obviously take far more care um, in making sure that this is uh, the, right Im the right information. Shields is at the top. And go back to content. And so now you can see that we have here a the same widget as we have for the front page, but now it's on the, the download page. And we can have um, you know a Linux, a Mac, and a Windows tab here. This is this is what I, I thought would be a nice idea and uh, use the same styles that we already have um, to to make this page really nice. And the same thing goes for, for lots of other CCMS pages. If you think that the pages would look in interesting with this wi widget, then give it a try. Um, I mean, we, we should have a sta staging version of the, the website that you can try things on, as well as um, testing things here and scrapping them, not publishing them if, if they don't work out. Um, thank you very much for watching this demonstration. I uh, hope it hasn't been too long. Have a very good night.